Hey, what's going on everybody? And a warm welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And by popular demand, we look at seven of the most rare bottles I have in my whiskey collection. You know the deal, run that video. Okay then folks, let's get into today's video, shall we? And thank you so much for everybody who's been subscribing lately. I really appreciate it. We've had a, quite a decent influx of new subscribers lately, so hopefully you were enjoying all our good content that we're putting out. Don't forget to go over to the channel as well, look in the playlist, and we have a bunch of different content. I'm trying to be really unique and creative with some of the content that I am putting out, so hopefully you guys are enjoying it, and girls at home there. So today's episode, we have seven whiskies, seven rare whiskies or meaningful whiskies to me. We have some bourbon, some rye, and some single malts. Again, what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about each bottle and how I managed to get that ball and why it's rare, unique or special to me. So let's just dive straight into the, this <laughs> the video, I guess. So first up we have, and this came up early in the kind of Whiskey Cove's journey. Uh, this is going back in about July, I managed to get this bottle. And this is going to be Willet Purple Top Nine Year. This is a 67.1% or 134.2 proof. And this is the Argonaut Pick there from Denver, Colorado. Bottle, um, it was 141 balls, so this was one of those. Definitely need to crack this guy at this point, but I've just had so many empty bottles that I've just been trying to kill off. Some of these balls have just kind of taken a little bit of a back burner for the time being. So how I managed to get this bottle was, Argonauts in Denver, uh, for Father's Day, they do a, a Father's Day wheel spin. So basically you line up, and I think there was like a good 400 people there, and you spin the wheel and there was different bottles on the wheel depending on what they had left. And I spun it and I managed to get one of these Willet, Willet, uh, Willet Purple Tops. So super, you know, I've never even seen these in Colorado. So I was super fortunate to get this. It did come at quite the cost. Um, hopefully my wife is not listening to this, but it, even though that it's MSRP, I still paid $330 out the door. So a little bit of a sting there. Uh, definitely, I think the second most expensive ball I've ever bought. Um, it's definitely worth it. A lot of people tell me that this is really great juice. I just need to get into it. Like I said, too many open bottles that I really just need to kill off right now. So that was bottle number one, Willet Purple Top. Next up, um, this bottle isn't super allocated or anything like that. It's just an older bottle, I guess, that they just don't, don't make anymore. And that's gonna be High West. And this is gonna be the Silver Whiskey. Oh my God, pure rye. So this ball, I believe is like back from like 2014 or 15, more or less when they first opened up. And there used to be a sticker on the top here that said like $21. So I actually picked this up last year, which is insane. I think I was like down in like Mississippi or one of the Southern states down there. And they, um, I just stopped at like, just a hole in the wall type store. And I was looking at the whiskey collections, just doing a little bit of hunting couldn't find anything and then as I was walking out just glancing at like the vodka or gin this bottle was just sitting there I guess it had just been put in the wrong place all this time and it just kind of just been left there so maybe that's a little bit of a tip to you if you ever go out there whiskey hunting maybe check the vodka and the clear spirit section too because you'll never know what you found like I said I paid like 20 25 bucks for this they haven't made it for the longest time and yes this is a rye and the research that I did about this said that they put it into uh, so I think they put it into like a rye barrel for like a day it says whiskey distilled from a rye mash pots distilled at 7,000 feet in Park City Utah this is number six, uh, the assay number, so I guess like the, the run number is six. And then the ball number is 1239. ABV is 49.3% or 98.6 proof. And then the mash bill is 80% rye and 20% malted barley, non-chill filtered, not carbon treated. But a super rare and unique ball. I've never seen any of these before. I see sometimes people have them on Facebook. But super fortunate that I was able to get this and like it's just a one of a kind of bottle I'm not sure what to expect when I finally do decide to crack it But I think it's just something to sit on for a while and just really enjoy it kind of maybe when it's like 10 years old Hopefully it doesn't taste too much like vodka. Hopefully it has some kind of I guess not vodka But hopefully it doesn't taste too much like white dog in a way Hopefully it has some kind of flavor notes going on there But I guess we'll wait and see for a rainy day So that was bottle number two and that was the high west. Oh my god pure right uh, next up, we have something that's special to me personally. It is still an expensive bottle, but this one is very special to me, and I'll tell you why. So that is gonna be Johnny Walker Blue Label. 
generally this bottle retails for around about $200 on why this bottle is special to me and if we'll open that up here and I'll pull it out. So this was a gift from my wife uh, for our wedding uh, and it is engraved by, um, it is engraved by I guess whoever did the engraving when my wife bought this and it just says uh, my, my name and my wife's name on it and then the day we kind of got married and that's the Johnny Walker Blue Label, beautiful bottle. Again, a bottle that I need to open but I'm not quite sure what kind of I should do this. I'm kind of, do I drink it now? Do I drink it maybe when we celebrate like 25 years of marriage? Or should I just crack it and just taste like, I uh, take like a, a sip or a pour every year just to celebrate kind of another year married. So I, I think she paid around about, you know, high hundreds. That's generally kind of what they set at. But like a really special, rare, and meaningful bottle to me because it's just a one in a kind thing. But I think I'm going to probably crack it now coming up here and then I'll just take a, like a pour every year. I think that's probably the best idea. If you folks have any ideas what I can do with this, then please let me down, know down in the comment section. So that was Johnny Walker Blue Label for, for bottle number three. Then for bottle number four as well, this is a bottle that you've probably seen up here a bunch of times if you watch the videos a lot. That is gonna be Well Single Barrel. So this is obviously a very highly allocated, rare whiskey bottle. I managed to pick this up about 18 months ago. Uh, I didn't pay MSRP for it, but I also didn't pay really high, like $1,000 for it. I paid like $400 for it. Yes, that is a lot of money. I think MSRP sits at like 70 bucks for these, but I've just never seen them. I've never seen them or heard them even come to Colorado. And I really, really wanted to complete the Weller lineup, even though I don't have William Leroux Weller, but that's a story for another time. But still, you know, this is a Weller single barrel, the original we did bourbon, coming in at 48.5% alcohol, or 97 proof. I have a question about these, uh, and for you folks at home, what would be the difference between this Weller single barrel and say, like uh, the Green Special Reserve uh, Stopic, you know, the ones that have the circle, like the Stopic single barrels? Yes, that is ABV would be like 45% compared to the 48.5, but that would be a single barrel too. So this is a single barrel. So are we chasing the wrong bottle here? Should we just be chasing the Green Single Barrel picks? Maybe, and again, single barrel could be a lot different to what you try at home. So again, another bottle I need to get into, but I am waiting to hopefully get a bottle of William Lurella or a sample of William Lurella so I can do a complete blind flight of the, uh, of the Wellers, which is why I'm keeping my CYPD as well. So that was Weller, single barrel. And then next up on this list, and again, if you've been watching the videos lately, you would have seen me pick this up, and that was a Christmas lottery raffle, and that was the 2022 release of George T. Stagg. Won this in a Christmas lottery at MSRP. I think I paid about $119 for it, so there or there about when it comes to MSRP. Again, this is the 2022 edition, coming in at 69.35% ABV or 138.7 proof. A lot of people are saying a lot of great things about this. I would have opened this right now, but I have a really special occasion coming up, which I've been saving this for. And that is gonna be uh, the birth of my second child coming up here in the next couple of weeks. So I really just kind of wanna, have, I really want to have that experience with my family when we all come home from the hospital after everything's gone fantastic and then I can just dive into this to kind of celebrate that. Maybe do a live stream as well, that might be something I might work on here shortly. But nevertheless, I'm very happy that I managed to pick up this George T. Stag. Very fortunate and very humbled as well because this is uh, the first George T. Stag. Uh, I, they were not the first one I've tried. I managed to try one at a friend's house here, the 2019 one, which she generously opened up and shared. So I'm really interested to see what the 2022 one goes like. But again, very happy that I was able to get this at MSRP. So, so far we've seen five bottles and we have two bottles left. And the last one's very rare and unique. So I'm gonna put that one there. So the next up, we have a single malt, and that is gonna be a Welsh single malt, and that is gonna be Pandaren. Yes, I'm a big fan of Pandaren because it's from my home country, Wales, and because the juice is fantastic. And as you can see behind me, plenty of Pandaren there. But what makes this one so special and unique is this is a Welsh single malt aged for 15 years in Buffalo Trace barrels. Yes, I said that right, aged for 15 years sitting in a Buffalo Trace barrel. I have cracked this guy open as well. It does have some bourbon kind of spice notes and some touches of vanilla there, but then I got a lot of the Pendaren typical kind of pear and apple profile there as well. So this, is, this was just a one-time release. This is coming in at 59% alcohol. 
and this is only bottle 76 of 114 so there was only ever 114 of these bottles these never came to Colorado and I had to do a lot of hunting to get it I think I paid close to about $230 for it I think MSRP was about 150 bucks I went on the internet went to loads of stores around the US and there was a place up in Washington some wine distributor and they had it sitting there but they wouldn't ship it to me straight away I had bought it and I had to wait like three months as they were going through like um, I guess like an application process to be able to ship to Colorado so I had to wait a little bit for that but the package definitely did finally come and I managed to get this guy as well uh, this is definitely probably my biggest unicorn in my collection because yeah, like I said it's it's one of only 114 and they'll never be able to replicate this single barrel as well so that's why this is really special to me and I, it, it's just great whiskey as well like I said it has a really nice blend of like Buffalo Trace bourbon notes and Welsh single malt notes so that was Pendarin 15 year bourbon cask finish so lastly or lost I should say the last bottle we have on this list is a stag and it is a stag junior hold your horses not just any old stag junior you're probably thinking is it batch one two three four no it hasn't got a math batch because it's a store pick and what's so special about this store pick was you might have heard me mention them a few times on this channel uh, there's a local group here in Denver called 5280 whiskey they do a couple of barrel picks every now and again and sometimes we get an opportunity if you're in touch with the whiskey world around Colorado to be able to pick up some of the picks that they do so how I got this bottle was I had to put my name in on kind of like a lottery here with local liquor store and I had to make a $50 donation to the charity the 5280 was supporting and then I managed to get this bottle at MSRP I think it was like $60 so it ended up costing me about $110, $120 but 50 of that was going to a very special cause. And what's so rare and unique about this bottle and I think I have this information right at least this is what I was told is that this was picked uh, by 5280 Whiskey who were also the people who were involved in uh, Hidden Barn, the new release for, uh, coming out from uh, Kentucky and also Fred Mimic was involved in, in picking this up as well but it looks a little bit like that the ball has us like really nice stag kind of in a suit you know? so this ball was picked again you know Fred Mimic's palette you know he was there when they picked this ball and this is why I think this is just so rare and unique it doesn't really ha I don't I wouldn't like to put the price on it as well and I, I really want to open it but again I'm being a bit selfish in the aspect that I really want to use it for an, a special occasion, get some friends or I will celebrate a birthday, a graduation, something like that, or a wedding. So that's why I'm keeping this bottle and that's why this is a rare bottle that I have in my collection. Uh, for you at home, this is coming in at 66.7%, so not hazmat, 133.4 proof beautiful bottle hopefully you know in the future I can still continue to get more stack juniors because I just love this juice as well and I think that you know with two releases a year it makes it a little bit easier for me here in Colorado but I know out there how much it is hard for you folks out there so hopefully you enjoyed today's video and you know no by no means am I showing you these balls as kind of like a flex or anything like that I'm just really happy and fortunate that I was able to get these and not all of them are super allocated or rare they just really meaningful at least to me here as well so uh, if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel as we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time hopefully these whiskeys cheers